welcome to another Soccer Down Here 1v1. It's part of our What's Next series. You know, we're all kind of figuring out what happens next in the soccer world, whether it's on the professional side, whether it is on the youth side, uh, around the world. And this is kind of a perfect person to talk to on two different levels. What happens next in the supporters group culture? What happens next on the youth soccer side? Kevin Kinley of The Faction joins us. What's up, Kevin? Hey, Jason. You doing all right? Yeah, doing okay. You know, it's we're all kind of figuring this out as we go. I mean, you know, we're trying to figure out what shows look like on a daily basis, uh, live shows especially, which you had a big hand in helping us figure out how to do in the first place. You know, we did <laughs> tailgate shows with the faction from almost day one, and I was looking forward to the next home game because game one, we had a bunch of stuff inside the stadium. I had to get in early. We weren't able to come out and see you guys. And game two, I was looking forward to being out there, and then it didn't happen, and we're still waiting for it to happen and, and what that looks like. So how has this been, I guess, in your role with the faction in a leadership position what have the conversations been like for you guys, and what are you guys doing right now? Um, <clears throat> well, it was obviously a, a big disappointment, uh, you know, when everything was announced that, that things were, were going south. Um, but <clears throat> what we've been doing now is just keeping our our community together, our, our members together, in, in uh, chatting online, emailing. We've done a, uh, a couple of Zoom meetings, which has been really good to – to see people's faces and, and crack jokes and, and, uh, talk Atlanta United. Um, and, uh, we've been, um, doing some philanthropy stuff, uh, through the different youth organizations and community stuff that we do. And, uh, but other than that, we're, we're sort of in a holding pattern, just, uh, waiting for the, the season to kick back off in somewhat fashion. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> looking forward to, to something normal happening, you know, it's just such a weird time. Yeah, it, it is. And for a group like you guys who, you know, it's, it's based around being social, it's based around, you know, doing things in the community. What have you guys been doing in your local communities as, as the faction right now? Um, we've been supporting frontline workers through uh, our other co-founders have uh, restaurants in the area. So they've been donating uh, lots of, of uh, meals to uh, to frontline workers, and um, we've been trying to support uh, local youth soccer organizations as much as we can. But there's not really much to do because they're they're closed down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and we've been uh, getting our philanthropy committee together to discuss um, any ways that we can use our budget in the short term with helping out um, other community organizations such as uh, the Veterans Empowerment Organization or Decatur Education Fa Foundation. Um, so we've been, you know, more of it in discussions uh, other than uh, helping out those frontline workers through our the restaurants that our co-founders have. That's what I've been really impressed with, with, you know, all of the supporters groups, not even just an Atlanta thing, just supporters groups all over the world who are finding ways to harness their power for, you know, good. And, and as you know, both of us know, doing different things in the community, there's not one way to do that. You know, everybody's kind of found their own thing that matters to, to their group and, and found a way to be positive through all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been great to see not just our supporter groups, like you said, really reach out to the community, but, you know, I follow a lot of other supporter groups around the country and, and everybody's trying to do their part, you know, and, and, uh, um, just trying to help out and, and be uh, be one with each other. So I think it's great to, to have that. It's key. And, and as we all try to figure it out, I think, you know, sharing best practices and sharing information is just so important. So on the youth soccer side, you know, it's, it's very different than a, a game day at Mercedes Benz, you know, to have youth matches. But like you said, that's shut down too. We've seen that, that U.S. club soccer has allowed its members, depending on the, the state, and, and that's going to be different state to state and municipality to municipality, they have allowed you know local decisions to be made. You know, where is, is the conversation for you as a youth soccer coach and 
in that, you know, in terms of upcoming tryouts, in terms of, you know, the, the current season that has been stopped at the very beginning and just what the landscape looks like right now on the youth side. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> Being a soccer coach here uh, in and around Decatur area um, for Inter Atlanta FC, um, and also being close to, to DDY, which I'm pretty close to still as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny we've been we've been trying to stay connected with the players um, throughout all this. Uh, each each coach has been kind of um, given some some leeway on how to uh, reach out to their teams, but. For the most part, and and for me, um, uh, I've been uh, recording training sessions in my backyard and sharing them with the team. Uh, I also share them with other coaches so they can kind of pass them around. Um, And uh, also been doing uh, Zoom practices. I did one last night for about, you know, 30 minutes or so. Um, And then, you know, just doing the, the, the personal connection with the team, you know, just doing a question and answer, just random questions, you know. I asked uh, my team last night um, to prepare an answer for, for the for the session, but it, the question was, who is your favorite all-time player um, and why? And then also, you know, what are their accolades? And wh- what, do you, what do you look up to in that player? And it was really all over the board. I coach a 11 year, uh, under-11 girls soccer team, and, uh, you know, there were players from, from Maradona to Joseph Martinez to uh, Brandy Chastain to uh, Tobin Heath. Um, and mine personally was, was Michelle Akers. So I, I mm-hmm. really enjoyed um, giving information to, to, you know, 10 and 11 year olds um, about who Michelle Akers was and what a pioneer she was in the sport. So I think, you know, even though we're, we're, we're not, doing soccer or playing or practicing physically together is still important to, to keep the players connected to the game somehow. And and I think that's important as far as, um, what, uh, what is, you know, going forward and what the plan is now, I think, um, and I'm speaking for, for what inner Atlanta is doing, but I'm sure most of the other clubs are doing it as well as, you know, they, we are, um, most of us are mandated, down through us youth soccer and then they let the state organizations kind of kind of do that so Mm -hmm. georgia youth soccer has has set a a tryout date um for the beginning of june i believe um but a lot of the clubs are not doing their normal tryouts so enter atlanta is doing um a tryout but it's only going to be for for players that are not already enter atlanta players um And the way that they're going to do those tryouts are going to be very, (coughs) excuse me, very individualized thinking of social distancing and, and staying, you know, away from at least six feet apart and just doing like short little 10 minute sessions of trying to figure out, uh, the skill level of the player, what kind of abilities they have and, uh, their enthusiasm for the game. And, you know, that's all you can do. It's, it's really a, a sad way to evaluate um, a player because the way you evaluate a player is seeing them play in a game, you know, against competition. So, um, it's very unfortunate, but, um, that's the the way that tryouts are going to go. And, um, and then moving forward, I think throughout the summer, there'll be, uh, sort of like camping session, camp sessions where, you know, you have little stations and, you know, every player is going to be, you know, six or 10 feet apart and uh, you're in groups of less than 10 and, and uh, you know, doing session, uh, little stations. And then you go to some, a, a different coach and do different stations. Um, and then hopefully, you know, going into the fall, they're going to loosen up the restrictions where you can play three V three against each other, you know, five V five and, and move on up as, as time progresses. If, if uh, you know, things go well, um, it's just really an unknown right now. So um, the fall season is kind of, and we don't know what's going to happen yet, you know, so things change so fast. So that's what's going on in, in the youth soccer scene. And um, I think to, to add, you know, to add one more thing about the whole youth soccer uh, landscape is when the, when the DA uh, the development Academy kind of um, broke apart. Yeah. I was uh, going to ask you about this. 
Oh man, so many domino effects happened there. You know, um, there were so many top teams that were a part of that DA and they split off and some went to ECNL, um, which is a, a national league. Uh, some went into more regional level leagues, such as the SCL. Um, other, other clubs such as uh, NASA Top Hat went into a new, uh, a new league formed um, called the, uh, uh, I think it's the G- Girls Development League. Um, and uh, it's just strange how all these different uh, leagues have popped up now. Some are still under U.S. Youth Soccer. Some are under U.S. Club Soccer. Um, but they all kind of feed into the same place. And there was actually a new announcement today with MLS and, and, uh, U S youth soccer. Right. Um, I think it was more of a, um, I don't know. It seemed a little bit glamorized. I'm not sure what has changed. Yeah. It kind of sounded like the support. I mean, I think there's, it sounds like there's going to be some coaching education and, and tools like that, which are good. It almost sounded like something either building on or, or working alongside like an ODP kind of process, like a talent identification process. Okay. Yeah. That kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but it's just so, uh, you know, back, you know, 15 years ago, I remember, you know, there was, there was one, you know, Georgia select <laughs> league or whatever, yep. and Athena and classic and uh, all the, all the clubs were in it. And, you know, the state champion went to the regionals and and it was so simple and, and basic. And, you know, you got to, if you were good enough, you played against the best teams, you know, if you weren't, then you were down in the, in the classic two or, or Athena B. Um, and uh, the way it is now, it, it's so, it, it feels diluted. It feels like a watered down Coca-Cola, you know, um, because all these teams are in these different leagues and you, you, you know, and they're traveling everywhere and all this kind of stuff. And we, Atlanta has such a base of great soccer programs and players here. And it just seems almost silly that we can't all play each other. And and we really don't even have to travel, you know, I mean, there's so many good players. It just seems silly that all these leagues are popping up and, and uh, um, you, ha- you know, if you want to, go somewhere you have to be in this league if you want to go to this college you might want to you know you got to try to strive to be in this league it's just uh it's very odd to me and and uh i hope i hope it's for the best so we'll see yeah i'll be curious to see if on the youth side after you know covid19 if there's maybe a push to get more local and and get you know reduce some of the travel because you know look I mean, we've got to be real about the, the cost effect of everything that, that's going to happen in the game. There's not going to be as much money to work with. And whether it's families not able to, to pay as high of a fee, you know, travel costs, all the different elements that come into it, maybe there is a push to get more local. And, and in Atlanta, that's a great thing. And, you know, some parts of the country where things are more spread out, maybe it does get a little bit harder. That'll be an interesting after effect that's going to take some time to see. I hope it does uh, have an effect on, on that because what we're talking about is the pay to play, you know, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I hope that, uh, that the COVID situation does have an effect on that. Um, I'm hopeful. Yeah, it absolutely could. And I, I want to finish putting your other hat on. Let's put your faction hat back on for a second. Has there been any thought to what things look like? I mean, I don't think we're going to have fans in the stands anytime soon. I think everybody understands that. But, you know, even once we get through this, have there been any thoughts to what a, a tailgate post COVID-19 looks like? Yeah, we, we, we talked about it on our, our Zoom call the other day with members. And, and uh, you know, with, with no fans in the stadium, I don't think they're going to be, you know, allowing us to, to be in the parking lot at, at all. So mm-hmm. that's probably not going to happen. But, um we talked about, you know, doing a, a virtual tailgate, you know, a Zoom tailgate where, um, you know, you're watching the, the TV in your living room or your basement or on the back porch or whatever. And, you know, you've got an extra phone in the corner and, or a computer and and uh, at least you can see everybody and, and uh, you know, have some conversation at halftime. Maybe do like a little little program uh, geared towards your members, a little giveaway maybe or something and 
just to keep the the uh, the camaraderie and the, and the togetherness and because I think that was so so important not just you know tailgating in the gulch um, and behind the varsity in, in the first year but you know being in the stadium with with people that that uh, that you enjoy being around and and uh, I miss that you know going mm-hmm. into the stadium and the 18 20 times a year where you'd be around these people that you 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 come to be friends with and you you like being around them and you drink, you know, beer together or, you know, high fived, you know, and, and hugged. And, and, uh, I think that's going to be something that is going to be really hard, uh, more, more so even maybe for the, for the players on the field, you know, not hearing fans, you know, uh, do the ATL clap or, or whatever. So, um, that's our plan right now, you know, um, you know, hopefully, the more into the season that it goes in, into October, maybe, or, or November, you know, maybe we'll be able to have an out outside uh, viewing parties um, with our trailer at, at a restaurant or something. But um, again, we'll just have to wait and see for that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of where we all are. It feels like every day we learn something new and, and I know you guys will be on top of it. Y'all have been very, I think very essential in the whole Atlanta United camaraderie that the the supporters have, no matter what group you're part of. And I know you guys will be essential in figuring out what that looks like after all of this. Let everybody know if they're they're kind of you know want to learn more about about the faction. Where can they follow? Where can they get more info? Yeah, so it's uh, the faction ATL is our uh, social handle on all the uh, all the social handles and. Um, or you can go to the faction com on our website. Um, we're, we're here. We're actually for the, for the month of May, we're promoting mental health month, which we have done for the past two years. So, um, please, uh, help support that in any way you can. And, uh, we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Same here. Same here. Hopefully in person, we can have a beer together pretty soon because yeah. I think we're all getting a little antsy. Yeah. Yeah, we are for sure. Oh, man. Kevin, thanks for the time. Um, hopefully we won't have to do another one of these what's next, and hopefully we'll just be able to have a celebration soon. Um, we'll see. But thanks for all you're doing yeah. for the community. We appreciate it. Yeah, Jason, thank you for all that you're doing. I mean, just, just to be out there and talking to folks and getting on the air, I think it's very important for, for your voice to be heard as well. So you and Mike and, and, and uh, uh, John and everybody, so we appreciate what you do as well. I love doing it, and hopefully we get to keep doing it and have more real matches to talk about really soon. But, Kevin, thanks for the time. Okay. Talk to you soon, Jason.